she died and had a quick conversation with God. In the early 2000s, she recalls her son being four months old. Throughout her pregnancy, she faced constant sickness due to her gallbladder issues, leading to feelings of faintness. Doctors suspected a pregnancy-related ailment. Post-birth, fainting persisted, and an emergency surgery revealed gallstones blocking her bile duct. The surgery lasted from 8.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Afterward, in her room with a gastric tube, she felt breathless and weak, thinking she might die. Suddenly, she felt outside her body and found herself in a dark tunnel with people. A beautiful light at the tunnel's end brought relief, love, satisfaction, and happiness, intensifying beyond words. Approaching the light, a silhouette blocked her, showing her challenging life. Distressed, she protested reliving it, but the silhouette said change was in her hands. She could help many with her pure soul. Needed on earth, she immediately thought of her son. Moving backward like a vortex, she found herself back in a room, observing her body on a surgery table that looked like a defibrillation room. The overseeing doctors pronounced her dead. A nurse begged for one more attempt, and reluctantly, the doctor agreed. Re-entering her body, she couldn't remember anything. On the way to her room, her roommate inquired about the unusual event as the staff mentioned her return from a distant place. When she tried to ask questions, she received evasive answers. Over time, she realized this sounded implausible, but it's the truth, believe it or not. That concludes Lidisha's near-death experience, moving on to our second NDE. During the delivery of her third child, she unexpectedly had a conversation with God. During this delivery, she inhaled anesthetic through a mask. To skeptics who might dismiss drug-influenced experiences, she assured them that she was completely lucid and clear-minded throughout. She self-administered the inhalant, and when the doctor expressed concern about her losing consciousness, she removed the mask and reassured him that she was doing well. A being whom she understood to be God conveyed the need for a conversation. He indicated that it was a rare opportunity to have her full attention. At one point during the conversation, she realized she was in grave physical danger, later learning that her blood pressure had dropped significantly. Despite the doctor panicking in the background, God assured her that she wouldn't die, so she stopped worrying. With brief exceptions when she had to say something to alleviate the doctor's concerns, she could no longer hear him. During this conversation, she was told many things about her life and religion and had the chance to ask and receive answers to many questions. However, she was then informed that after returning to consciousness, she'd forget everything she had just heard. Let me remember one thing, she pleaded. You'll remember that this conversation took place, but you won't remember what you learned until the time is right, she was told. As she came back into full consciousness, she was aware that her new knowledge was being veiled, much to her disappointment. But the overwhelming idea that God had spoken to her and knew her as an individual overshadowed the disappointment. Until this moment, she had never shared this experience with anyone. She wasn't given any messages to share, and she had no responsibility to tell other people. Other than recording it in her journal, she had kept it to herself since the event took place. The most intriguing part of her story unfolded several weeks later. When her baby was born, her friend K.L., who was eight months pregnant with her first child and shared the same obstetrician-slash-gynecologist, was in a state of panic. She wanted to know every detail about the birthing experience, and no matter what she was told, she would become anxious. K.L. was terrified of the childbirth process. Unfortunately, the storyteller couldn't offer much reassurance as she was still recovering from a painful episiotomy and nursing issues. Although her baby was generally well-behaved, he had nightly crying episodes in the first few months. On one night, about four weeks after the birth, she woke up suddenly at 3 o'clock a.m., wide awake and with a racing heart. She experienced intense pain, akin to contractions. Instinctively, she began to breathe through the pain, recalling Lamai's techniques from years earlier. A strange thought crossed her mind, Kay is having her baby. For some inexplicable reason, she felt that the pain was too much for Kay, and she was somehow sharing in it so that Kay could bear it. The experience lasted about 10 or 15 minutes before she went back to sleep. The next morning, Kay's husband called to announce that Kay had indeed given birth the previous night. 
The storyteller shared the precise time, surprising him, but she never revealed how she knew. Moving on to the final near-death experience, NDE, in the video. The last words heard were, we don't think she is going to make it. The next memory was being in a dark tunnel with a light at the end. Feeling compelled, she moved toward the light and encountered a being of light. The experience was incredibly peaceful, beyond words. The being informed her that she was home, but needed to return because there was work for her to do. The being explained that the meaning of the work would become clear upon her return, showing her a vision of a peaceful world achievable through faith and mutual assistance. She agreed to come back, knowing that she would eventually remember her true self and purpose on earth. After completing her work, she would return home. The return to the earthly realm was challenging, marked by a painful awareness of the material plane. However, she came back with a profound understanding of life, a lack of fear of death, and a clear sense of her purpose on earth. And that concludes the final near-death experience. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Until next time, stay safe and continue to be blessed.